for those of you who are tuning in just right now, $26,000. <laughs> Everybody and welcome to the Filipino Free Thinkers podcast. That's also a video. That's also part of a big webathon. Your voice. In <laughs> for the Yolanda relief, relief effort. effort. Uh, I'm Red. I'm Peter. Hi. I'm Georgie. Yes, and today we're going to be talking about something that we should have probably talked about way earlier in the podcast series, and that is the basics of free thought. Free thought 101. Frequently asked questions about free thought. So, what is free thinking? While we're on that, though, we'd like to say hi to our 26, 26 viewers, viewers as of right now. For all of you 26, if each one of you gave one US dollar, we would have $26 for the Red Cross relief. Think about that. <laughs> but if you gave $1,000 instead, we would have $26,000. At current exchange can we, rates, can we clip that out dollars. of context? Like, just say... Just do a, do a commercial about this whole thing. Twenty-six thousand yeah. dollars. Amazing, right? Should be a thing. Be a For those of you who are tuning in just right now, twenty-six thousand dollars. Okay. So, what is free thought? What is free thought? Free thought one hundred and one. Free thought one hundred and one. So a lot of people, when they hear free free thought, what do they think? Well, for my, from my experience, for, from for the for the uninitiated for the uninitiated when people hear the word free thought they hear undisciplined thinking for oh. some reason like they associate free with unrestrained mm. and unrigorous mm. so it's kind of like a free plus thought like yeah you know it's thought. like a like free a, space thought like a freestyle yeah exactly you know? like a freestyle kind of thinking mm -hmm. Anything goes, basically. That's the most common that I have encountered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and why, you're a free thinker. Why, why don't you allow that? And some people find it uh, funny that you would have to use the term free thought. Like, they think it's a free speech. So, anyone is a free thinker. That's, funny that's or what unnecessary. I, you yeah. often get like, no, it's important that there's no space because free thought is a philosophical... At around that point, people go... Uh, okay, but it is important to make a distinction. Yeah. It's not just something that we made up. There is a rich history behind the term. Mm -hmm. There was a free thought movement, and that's what we're going to talk about today. What was the free thought that they were referring to? So it's uh, the, the free thought that we're talking about is commonly free thought without the space. Just one word with two syllables, mm -hmm. free thought. And the activity that comes with it, free thinking, yes. and without a space. And we're, we're not making this up. You can actually look it up on dictionaries online, Merriam-Webster or Wikipedia or Google. So free thought is defined as um, uh, evaluating truth claims not by authority or dogma or tradition, like in particular when it refers to religious claims, mm. because free thinking is uh, particularly re relevant when it comes to religious claims, but instead using the best um, of your reasoning abilities, abilities you know, logic, using empirical evidence, and using science. So let's, uh, let's look into that whole definition a bit by bit. So free comes from not freestyle or not anything goes. It comes from being free from the shackles that, that used to, when they made up this term, like uh, limit thinkers. So what are these things? Again, authority, dogma, and tradition. So authority, somebody tells you to think a certain way, to think a certain thing, and that's what you think. It could be your parents, mm -hmm. Could be priests. Yes. It could be the government forcing you to not have religion. So, so you could be a, a free thinker by force, which is kind of contradictory. So you can't. You can't. I take that back. Um, of course, there's tradition. Yes. You know, um, as um, many free thinkers have pointed out, people tend to believe uh, based on the cultures that they were born in. <clears throat> okay, and a lot of people find it hard to move away from that kind of traditional thinking. And of course, authority, because someone is your boss, someone is your elder, or maybe even a, a scientific authority. You think that someone is a scientist, therefore this person mm -hmm. must be correct, yeah. and I must be wrong, I must not question this person, so that's authority. When you free yourselves from, from these shackles of thinking, these shackles of thought, you tend to have a better chance at coming closer to your authentic truth, uh, what you know, uh, what is authentically 
something that you came up with yourself. Um, it's truly thinking for yourself. And then you're free to use your faculties. Let's talk about the faculties. Of course, um, logic. Logic is one. There has to be a certain consistency in the way we think. That is why free thinkers always look at the connections between the things they believe and see to it that the things that they believe, profess to believe, and act on do not contradict each other. Yes, uh, logic is one. Of logic course, there are you know awareness of uh, logical fallacies, which is part of critical thinking. Um, here's a link. Mm -hmm. So the link doesn't come out now because it's going to be edited in, in later by the guy behind the camera. So here's the link to uh, a, a common website for logical fallacies, and free thinkers are commonly aware of these. Mm -hmm. I think it's NISCO or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, there are many logical fallacies. Uh, our brains, of course, evolved to be this way yeah. unintentionally. There wasn't any guidance in there. So there are still some glitches in the machine. Yeah. And ways that you could prevent yourself from be, from falling uh, victim to this gl these glitches are, first of all, being aware of them. Mm -hmm. And, of course, just basically doing your best. Yes, to, to fight these cognitive biases, as they are called. Yeah, and to think for yourself. And then... When, when the claim is made, you've evaluated it not through the shackles, you freed yourself from the shackles, and through the, the, the utmost capacity of your own brains at that point, and then you, you hold the belief firmly, then you can, you, know, you can probably say, this is what I believe, this is what I, I think, and that's what a, what a free thinker is. And now, now we're going to talk about the frequent misconceptions about free thought. So let's, let's start with the most uh, common one, or one of the most common ones, is that to be a free thinker, you need to be an atheist. Isn't that very common? If I had a dollar for every time mm. I heard that, I'd have $26,000. <laughs> so, yeah, um, isn't that a common thing? Why it is, is that? Why is it? Uh, do people assume that when you're very skeptical, you have to be... Very this consistent, you know. <laughs> this person right here who just took off his mask is actually a free thinker, aren't you? Tell us about... Uh, yeah, I'm an Episcopalian. Uh, that's a branch of Protestantism. Uh, Christianity. It's, Christianity, uh, and he believes in God and Jesus and the whole shebang. Mm -hmm. Angels. However, that even friends of mine who, who know that... Uh, I mean, I go to church every Sunday, but they... He they teaches a, 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 I teach Sunday school. Sunday yes. school to the, kids. <coughs> he proselytizes. Is it that? No, they're already. Yeah. They're, they're, they're already, already there. They've so, already drank the Kool Aid. Yeah, yeah, so, okay, okay. So it's, anyway. it's you try yeah. to make it um, preaching to the choir. Yeah, you try to make it a little less. Uh, actually, we have a couple of atheist kids. Usually, the ones from Brent or, hmm. uh, yeah. or from, or from IS. But you know, it's fine. Like whatever. Uh, but see, you can be a free thinker. You don't try to convert them. You can be a free thinker. And a believer, for, for a Christian, and you could look like this too. Like for Episcopalians, it's considered bad form to proselytize. See, see, you could be it's cool. A little impolite. You could be cool as well. So there's nothing keeping you from being a free thinker. He's not, and it's not like we we drag around this guy and tell them, hey, you can be a free thinker and be a Christian, as if he's a like a token Christian right. that we just that lug around. Ridiculous. We we actually have many. Uh, Christians in the group, you know, we have meetups where there yeah, are. Actually, no, that, that that is true. The, while the token Christian thing may have been true for a little while, there yeah. are. Uh, we now have uh, Muslim Christians, a couple of a few Catholics, yeah. uh, a couple of Muslims. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so you know, people who believe in the the in higher powers, you know, mm -hmm. um, quite a few uh, New some, Agers. Yeah, New Agers, Wiccans, so, pagans. So, and they they all. Like I said, it's free thinking is more concerned with the process of thinking mm -hmm. rather than the particular conclusions that you might have. Now, uh, that's one of the things that I will ask Daniel Dennett later on. Like, you know, he, he's spoken about and written about things like this, like uh, consistency or belief in belief. And I'm interested in his take on this question of um, whether a free thinker necessarily has to be a naturalist or an atheist. But mm -hmm. from where... Our organization stands. You can be a free thinker and still believe in whatever thing that you want to believe. And um, and I hope that we have emphasized that enough. What are the other um, frequent misconceptions? I've heard people associate free thinking with 
What is that? Uh, masons? Yeah, Freemasons. Freemasons. Why? Why is that? If you could, if you could reach into my suit and <laughs> number. Okay. No, is asking there for are the adjustment phone. issues. You're having it's adjustment uh, issues. Yeah. No, it's, um, thankfully, the table goes there. up to there. I'm not actually wearing pants. Okay, he's not wearing pants. So yeah, um, let's focus on the podcast because <coughs> we are doing one. Freemasonry is often associated with free thinking. Again, you could be a Freemason and a free thinker. But one does not necessitate the other or preclude the other, right? Mm -hmm. You could believe in aliens, you know, ancient, ancient aliens. Uh, it's, again, it's as long as your process of thinking is not impeded by authority, dogma, and tradition, and it is uh, done Informed. with intellectual honesty, mm -hmm. with uh, <clears throat> you do your best to, like, from wherever you're at, at your intellectual development. Intellect and intellectual honesty, of course. Yeah implies that you are open to having your beliefs and ideas criticized. And I guess that's the popular word for it, open-mindedness. Mm. You're open to everybody else's ideas, you're open to your own ideas being, being questioned, and, questioned, and then you're and open challenged. to question other people's ideas with, without going personal. And that's really what I like about the free-thinking community. Like, um, coming to Red, we usually disagree in a lot of points, but we're always happy to say, like, okay, it's time for us to agree to disagree, and it's fine. Yeah, yeah and and, uh, and also... Thor movie one was a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay, now he's just and trolling us. And <laughs> also... No, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's an actual... I think, I think one thing that must be like emphasized is, flames. you know, it, um, free thinking, again, it's not, it not, it's not anything goes. And open-minded, as Georgie <coughs> has mm -hmm. talked about it, does not mean open-minded to the point that your brain falls Close off. Out. Falls <laughs> out. Uh, it's. I, I mean, you don't go full open-minded, right? That's a common thing that that I will start to stay to say starting now. You don't go full open-minded and believe whatever without question. <coughs> it's not it. It's not just not being <coughs> impeded. It's also using your critical faculties to the to the best of your abilities. So, uh, what, uh, what other misconceptions about free thinking are there? It's also maybe about activism. We've started to become more involved Militancy. in public yeah. advocacy, mm -hmm. in, in activism, mm -hmm. in going out to the streets and making calls for causes that we think are important. But that's not necessary to free thinking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in its original form, the free thinkers actually used to be accused of armchair activism. Uh, there were quite a lot of people who said, like, well, you keep talking about these issues, but you never do anything. Mm. So once you start doing something, then people are like, well, why do you keep doing stuff? You should just sit down and talk about it. So, so. Yeah, yeah, that's in our experience. But um, just some trivia, the first free thinkers were <coughs> deists. Like, uh, back then, the, the equivalent, I mean, the farthest that you could go um, in terms of these, of questioning religion, or the existence of God or stuff like that is deism where there is a God but that God probably just made the world and didn't interfere afterward. Mm. So free, the, the term free thinker was commonly applied back then to deists. And then of course Darwin came along and said that you could actually have human beings without a creator um, through the process of evolution. And suddenly people who, who thought that, that Atheism or the idea that there was no God was absurd. We're thinking, huh, it's actually possible to defend the position of atheism <coughs> from a scientific and empirical uh, point of view. And some people did start to become atheists. Mm -hmm. And maybe they, they became atheists, but not all of them did. And like I said, it's not the conclusion that matters. It's more of the process of thinking. So, um, so much for... There's another one, though. Yeah. You know, another fallacy or misconception, misconception about yeah. free thinkers is that they have no sense of morality because morality is usually associated with having religion as its foundation. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, that, that's that's often the case. Like it, it, and it ties into the whole free thinking. Therefore, you do whatever you, you want. You want exactly. Um, so it's it's there, there's a certain looseness. There's a certain well. You don't have a moral code then. You don't have any kind of ethical basis. Uh, when in truth. At least in my experience, um, free thinkers uh, seem to, in many cases, they spend a lot more time thinking about ethics than exactly. the average Christian, mm -hmm. frankly, uh, in my experience. Because most of the people, to the point where a lot of people are a little annoyed um, when you start to talk about things that might challenge their faith. Mm -hmm. um, or even to discuss their faith, because it has become 
somehow, for whatever reason, maybe it's because there's so many um, Catholics. So usually, when you have a majority privilege class, like they, you tend not to you tend not to challenge it, and mm -hmm. it uh, so it seems almost impolite, mm -hmm. and they feel offended, um, and they're like, why why are we talking about this? Can we talk about something else? It's, it's it's you know you shouldn't no no religion on the dinner table sort of thing yeah. or at least no alternative religions on the dinner table yeah and as a matter of fact because precisely because free thinkers use reason logic science in order to inform their worldview free thinkers think about and mull over their ethical code more often in general so they have a tendency to think about what's right and what's wrong they don't take morality for granted because it's not handed down from on high, yeah. they and, don't and take it ex cathedral. Yeah, this overwhelming sense of personal accountability mm -hmm. that when you do something that's wrong, you're really accountable for it yourself mm -hmm. and that can be really quite a burden. Yeah, so that's why I think we mull over it a lot more than most. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, before we end, yeah, for, for those of you who um, uh, are just tuning in and then we're looking, um, we're actually this is actually part of a larger series where we're doing a live web show right now, so we are taking in comments and suggestions, and we're also like peeling the veil a little bit back behind these podcasts uh, in the same way of, as that episode of Mr. Rogers Neighborhood where he took away the cameras and then he realized that yeah. everybody, hey, hey children, we're friends, we don't lie to each other, so you know that intro where they're doing a panning shot of his neighborhood? <laughs> like he showed it, he turned the camera around and he showed like, yeah. here's a model guys. Mm -hmm. like, cause it's You're going to edit that part out. No, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Anyway, so, so I can tell fine. you right now that Garrick is showing his, his cute little iPhone thing and it's saying like, oh, it's two minutes. Hey, let, let me do the wrap, wrap up first so that, because that thing could run out. <coughs> oh, that's fine, right? No, no, no it's no, not no, fine. It's okay, you wrap. So, so um, as a final message, if you're still a, a believer and a free thinker, be thankful for free thinking because if you're part of an organized religion right now, it's probably not the same form that it was several centuries ago. And it's thanks to free thinkers who dared to think for themselves mm -hmm. and not follow tradition and authority, that you have the version that you believe in right now. All so, our dear Catholics out there, right, if you love reading the Bible, that's because of free thought. Because the fact that you can read the Bible in your native language yeah. was because of free thinkers. Okay, so, so thank you for watching this episode of the Filipino Free Thinkers <laughs> Filipino free think podcast. That's that is also, also a video. A video. A video. That is also a podcast. Part of a webathon. Yes. And thank you very much. Right. And so, donate to the Red Cross. Yeah. <laughs>